Hey guys, I'm Sun, I'm a privacy and security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. If you've been following this channel for some time, you've probably heard me at least a million times say that everyone should always use a VPN on their computer, except for specific, very sensitive use cases. I'll get those out of the way right away. If you're doing some really sensitive stuff, you should not use a VPN. The reason why is VPNs are honeypots, meaning all of your traffic is routed through a single point of failure where a nation state, anyone with a subpoena, whatever, can actually access that information exiting the VPN. Now, if you're doing really sensitive stuff, you absolutely wanna use internet in you know public Wi-Fi hotspots that don't have cameras. You wanna be using Tor because Tor is actually great for anonymity where a VPN is not really an anonymity tool, more on this in a second. So if you're into this kind of sensitive stuff, this episode will not cut it for you. Uh, perhaps I'll create stuff later, but you could have a look at the episode on using Google services behind Tor. Tor is the way to go. Now for everyone else, for people that are in Canada, in the United States, in China, in a country that has surveillance going on, and that's unfortunately pretty much all countries now, we use VPNs because we don't want our internet service provider or our government to sniff what we're doing on the internet. Now, not all VPNs are equal and all VPNs are honeypots. So how could you, you know, how can we consider using a VPN? Well, I've mentioned many times that I personally self-host my own StrongSwan VPN and that by self-hosting it, I have full governance over it for sure the servers could be compromised at you know the, the data center where those servers are running, but nonetheless, at least that makes it much harder. And I use a data center in a country with great privacy legislation, and I choose, I actually handpick the provider. But anyways, all of this is too much information. I will discuss self-hosting our own VPNs in a future episode. I'm doing research right now. This will be published shortly. But in the, in the meantime, not everyone is gonna to wanna to set up a Linux server and install through command lines and stuff like this, strong swan on it. That is for more advanced users. So if you're not one of those advanced users or you don't have the time to you know, go through all of that headache, what are your options? Well, I've been really, really uh, delaying uh, suggesting or promoting a VPN versus another for pretty much all of this series until today. I have to admit that not using a VPN is probably worse than using the VPN that I'll be mentioning in a second. Now, I wanna mention as well that this episode is not sponsored at all, nor does this VPN provider actually engage in sponsorships if, I mean, at least I haven't seen any so far. Um, so without further ado, the VPN provider in question is Malvad. Now, uh, many of you probably have heard of Malvad. This episode is for people who are just getting started around VPNs. If you know what Malvad is, if you're self-hosting your own, maybe you can just, you know, uh, skip this episode and, and get back to the future ones. But and nonetheless, let's, let's jump into why Malvad is the one that I decided to suggest uh, for less technical users. Malvad is a company that is based in Sweden. Sweden has really great privacy laws. It's not at all perfect. Sweden is actually in the 14 eyes. I'm not sure which level it is in you know, the, the different surveillance programs, but it's not in a country that's perfect. But it's definitely in a country that's better than North America, for instance. Uh, also, the founders behind Malvad, well, are publicly associated to this company. They, they're very quiet, there's not much you can find. There's one episode by one of the co-founders talking about Cubes OS, I'll link that in the description, uh, but at least they're public about it. Now, the other thing is uh, they have, you know, a pretty great privacy policy. So Malvad uh, does not log anything that we do and you don't even really need an account to connect to their VPN servers. What you use instead is an account ID that can be paid for using a credit card or other payment methods, but can also be paid through Bitcoin. Now paying with Bitcoin is not a silver bullet either for a whole bunch of reasons. I'll get one out of the way right away. You're probably gonna be using that VPN from home all the time. 
So if ever someone was logging things on a Malvad server, your account ID could clearly be correlated to you know, that origination IP that is your home IP. And therefore, you know, using that IP, it's very easy to know who's, you know, behind that internet. Uh, obviously, you could be jacking someone's internet and stuff like that, but that's kind of overkill. We're talking about more of a everyday use case scenario here. Um, so, as I just mentioned, uh, the account ID is clearly logged for some purposes, I'm sure they're logging it for abuse, but they're not correlated to whoever paid for it. That being said, if ever they're subpoenaed and someone forces them to install logging on their servers, they could, they could clearly correlate the traffic with the account ID and then link that to your home IP address. Okay, now that that's aside, um, their logging policy is one of the best out there. Um, now, if we look at this here on the computer, this is what they kind of talk, tell us about, you know, privacy. They obviously really care about privacy. The one thing that I'm interested in here is this. So as I mentioned, the founders are very public. Uh, well, very not, they're very discreet, but what I mean is that they're clearly saying who they are, which is already way better than uh, NordVPN for the longest of times, although recently uh, the founders did step uh, in public. Uh, the one thing that I really like here though is that there is no outside funding. So this is actually 100% owned by its founders, which is a really big deal. So it's a, 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 it's a Swedish company. It's 100% owned by its founders. Its founders are uh, known as good actors. They have a no log policy. You can pay using Bitcoin. Uh, they don't need an email address or a credit card or anything. So just that by itself is great. But we want to extend that a bit further. Uh, the other amazing thing about Malvad is it's open source. So the clients that we use on Mac OS or Linux or whatever, th these clients are open source. That means that anyone can go about auditing the code, making sure that the cryptography that's being used is actually good. Uh, so that's pretty neat. Now, uh, that's cool. So great governance, open source, based in a country, that's pretty neat. Um, but who who endorses, you know, Malvad, you know, and that's something that I always consider when evaluating a piece of technology. I really care about governance, about it being open source, but then I really care about who, you know, promotes that piece of technology. It's kind of like an extension of Web of Trust in the context of PGP. Uh, well, Firefox VPN uh, is actually uh, done in partnership with Malvad. So if we go here, uh, we can see that what you know Firefox and the Mozilla Foundation has done is partner up with Malvad and the Firefox VPN, which is apparently only available in the States for now, it will be available to other countries shortly. Well, that's done in partnership with Malvad. Uh, so that's pretty cool, but also private to, whoa, privacytools.io also recommends Malvad as their number one uh, VPN. And the hated one also recommended Malvad in a few of his episodes. So I trust Firefox, I trust the hated one, I trust privacytools.io. So by extension, I trust Malvad. I know this is not a perfect recipe in no way. It's not like actually knowing one of the founders, but that's much better than, you know, any other VPN provider so far as I know. So all of this said, that's why I feel comfortable recommending Malvad to users that don't want to run their own VPN. Uh, yeah, so let's go about setting things up. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. So this here is the, the privacytools.io website. And as you can see, Malvad is number one. Um, Cool, so let's let's set it up. Uh, so first things first, you need to generate an account. So I did that off camera. As I said, I paid using Bitcoin. I had, I, whoa, I asked a friend to send me a few, uh, a few bits, a few sats. Whoa, as you can see, I'm not a huge Bitcoiner here, but anyways, send me a few sats so I could set this thing up. Uh, so yeah, paying with Bitcoin is recommended. That being said, I'm gonna reach out to a few of my friends uh, who know Bitcoin way more than I do to actually see how traceable Bitcoin transactions are, that will probably be the subject of a future episode. So if you're into that, smash that subscribe button and we'll get there. So this account ID then needs to be funded and those are the funding methods. So credit card, PayPal, you know, or 
you can go about paying in Bitcoin, you get a 10% discount. Bitcoin is probably the most private alternative that, it, that we have here. So once this is done, we wanna go about downloading Malvad. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we save that onto the file system. And then we run the installer. So let's go about doing this here. As you guys know by now, my password on this demo computer is super shitty. Yours should be way longer. Um, okay, good. So installation is done. Move to trash. Once this is done, we can fire up Malvad and whoops, and then go about logging in. So as I said, this account ID is something that I did uh, off camera. So I'll paste it and I'll have to mask this. Sorry about that. And once we're logged in, uh, it can start uh, suggesting a place to connect. Now, uh, we're gonna do a few things right off the bat. First things first, we wanna choose a location with uh, that's in a country with great privacy legislation. Now, one of the ones that I prefer here is Switzerland. My favorite one is Iceland, but Malvat doesn't have endpoints uh, in Iceland. Switzerland is kind of like my next favorite here. Uh, and we can see that we're using WireGuard, so it does support WireGuard or um, OpenVPN, but WireGuard is fine. Once we go into the preferences here, now there's another thing that we wanna do. If we go in advanced, uh, we do not wanna enable IPv6 uh, unless you guys have an IPv6 use, a use case. Uh, we also wanna make sure that we always require uh, VPN. So enabling this will always require Malvad VPN connection in order to reach the internet. The app built-in kill switch is always on. This setting will additionally block the internet if clicking disconnect or quit. That is really important. What that means is if ever the VPN disconnects for any reason, your computer will not have access to the internet. This is something that I do using Packet Filter, uh, which is a low-level firewall on Mac OS. Uh, that's what I do when I'm self-hosting my own Strong Swan VPN server, more on this in a future episode. Uh, so now, okay, transport protocol, bridge mode, blah, blah, blah. So most of this stuff here is totally fine. This is really the one that we wanna enable here. And once this is done, if we reload this page here, we'll see that we're now in Switzerland. So it's pretty much that easy. It's super straightforward. Eventually when uh, you know, this account ID runs out of money, you need to add money money into it to extend, uh, you know, your access to Malvad. Uh, yeah, one last thing actually before I forget. In one of the previous episodes, I suggested uh, enabling DNS over HTTPS. That was a way for people who don't have a VPN to make sure that their DNS queries are routed through HTTPS as well. If you're using Malvad, that means that you're gonna be leaking DNS queries to Cloudflare versus Malvad. Obviously, if we're routing everything to Malvad, we trust them. So we wanna make sure that we disable, uh, enable DNS over HTTPS. Uh, now that this is being done, uh, we can go and do a few tests here. If we go in IP leak, uh, we can run a few of those just, just to see if everything is cool. Um, so as we can see here, we're in Switzerland. Um, let's see, so yeah, DNS address is also in Switzerland. Okay, so that's good. Now looking at this DNS test here, we can do the extended test. So we're actually seeing here if all of the DNS queries are routed through the VPN or if they're leaked. A lot of shitty VPN providers are really bad at making sure things don't leak. That's where using a trustworthy uh, provider that truly cares about privacy such as Malvad is really a blessing. Uh, so while this runs, let's do one last test here. Uh, okay, so no IPv6 leak. Uh, obviously that's, that's great. Um, let me see. Yeah, so we can see that we're actually here. Uh, that's one of the uh, bandwidth providers of Malvad here, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so, okay, by the way, those websites, I don't know very well. I just wanted to make sure that I did mention that running IP leak tests is a great thing to do before we start using the VPN in production for everyday use. Uh, but as we can see here, everything is being routed through 
Uh, oh yeah, and here as we can see, all of this test is done and we can see that all uh, DNS is routed through Switzerland. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I recommend always using a VPN except for those sensitive use cases I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I recommend self-hosting our own VPN. But for the people out there who just want to get started, who don't have sensitive use cases or do not want to go through the hassle of learning how to set up servers, Linux servers, well, Malvad is probably the way to go. Again, if you're doing sensitive stuff, if you're running sensitive queries, I would recommend running those on Tor true Malvad. That means that you're adding two layers of security and privacy. One is the VPN and the other is actually using the Tor browser. Uh, if you don't know what Tor is, I'll link an episode on how to use Google services behind Tor in the description. I hope this was helpful. I'm working very hard to get those uh, episodes on how to set up our own StrongSwan server out. I want to make sure that they're well, well researched uh, before I share them with you, but it's coming. Stay tuned. The whole sub-series uh, will be out shortly. Thanks for watching. Uh, by the way, the YouTube algorithm is not a huge fan of privacy content, so if you like the content, feel free to like it, share it, and comment if you have a question. That really helps. And as mentioned in earlier episodes, uh, this content is also uh, now uh, mirrored, sorry, it is so new, I don't even have the words for it, mirrored on Peertube, so I'll link to that as well in the description. See you soon. Bye-bye.